Hi, Bonnie. Good afternoon, Jason. How are you? I'm good. <laughs> Thanks Everything's for... going well here, so. Good, thank, thank you for coming on P People of PA Museums. And we, we have uh, Bonnie Shockey here, president and CEO of the Allison Atrium. No, Antrim. Antrim, Antrim Museum. A-N. <laughs> Not Atrium. No. You were telling me before the call that that, 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 that uh, slips people up quite a bit. Yes. Yeah, unless you're very local to Greencastle and Antrim. It looks like Antrim. I don't know why people would say Atrium. Because most people have never heard of the name Antrim, I think. Yeah, it's not really a familiar name. Like you would hear other places like Cumberland or Franklin or whatever. Yeah, or and. <laughs> Or if you were of Scott Irish background, you would know it's Antrim because Antrim Township was named after County Antrim in Northern Ireland. You and I'm correct. Your your president and CEO is your official title there. Yes, it is. Okay, how long have you been in that role? Uh, Twenty three years. Oh my word. Yes. <laughs> How do you how do you manage it? All of the stresses and things you have to. Think about. <laughs> um, I'm a certified aerobic dancing instructor, and I teach four days a week, so that helps get rid of some of the stress. <laughs> yeah, you said 23 years. Yes. So, how did you come upon um, uh, working there at at the museum? Um, a small group of local interested people in the Greencastle Antrim community got together back in 1994 and started having breakfast meetings at the Antrim House restaurant in town. And I joined in for a, and one of them was a lunchtime and I joined in during, for one of those lunch meetings and it was uh, the organization was actually established under the auspices of the Greencastle Antrim Chamber of Commerce. And um, from there, um, the the group applied for um, its incorporation papers, and uh, that happened in uh, ninety. 95, April 12th of 95. Uh, and then we got our 501c3 status, uh, which allowed us to start uh, collecting memberships and canvassing the community at large uh, for donations. Uh, we did not own property at that time, um, did not own property until 1990, April of 98. Okay. And just worked out of uh, the chamber office. We held meetings in what was then the First National Bank. Uh, this is a very small community compared to uh, Carlisle or even Shippensburg. Um, so this it was very grassroots, and the people here have do have a passion for for history and its local history. So correct me if I'm wrong, a recap. There was a, a group of people that were interested in history and preservation in the, in the area, and they kind of were incubated within the Chamber of Commerce? Yes, the Chamber of Commerce uh, hosted their, their meeting place sometimes. Okay. And um, once they got their incorporation, people started donating items. Okay. So there was no place to store those items. Um, and the First National Bank had uh, a third floor that they were not using in the bank on the square. And that's where the Walter Washington Smith painting collection uh, was stored until we, uh, the board of directors and the membership uh, made the decision to purchase the property at 365 Southridge Avenue. Okay. 
and is is that where it sort of gelled where Allison and Antrim kind of came together and museum was, was kind of centered around the building? Or uh, no, the, the name Allison Antrim, Allison comes from John Allison, who was the founder of Greencastle in 1782. Okay. And we'll celebrate an anniversary next year for the founding of Greencastle. And then, so Al John Allison's last name uh, represents the borough of Green Castle, and Antrim is the township uh, which totally surrounds the borough. Can you, uh, uh, I do want to back up a little bit, you know, bef before those times when you were, were getting active a little bit, but can you speak a little bit more about the Chamber's help from the beginning over the years? I think that's something that gets overlooked, I found in, in museum settings, smaller museum settings, is really working with the local chambers and get it, being involved with the Chamber of Commerce. Do you, yeah. Uh, yeah, I wasn't involved at the very, very beginning, but uh, the chamber director, executive director at that time, um, brought the uh, Greencastle Antrim citizens together and that's uh and uh, there the incorporation they and i wasn't there for the actual uh writing of the papers i got in near the end of that uh mm -hmm. for submitting to the state um but we had an attorney in town who donated his services for filing the papers uh, to the state. So this group did not have to pay um, to have the, you know, all of that paperwork filed and paid for. Mm -hmm. um, the other people on the, on the committee at that time uh, were local historians and um, relatives and people who just had a deep interest in the history of Greencastle and Antrim Township. So it was good to have that partnership with the business community because they could help with all of that other stuff. Definitely, definitely. Or it, it would not have had, it would have been more complicated. Yeah. Did, did you grow up in the area and have an interest in the, in the history of the area or what, what's that background? I actually grew up in Antrim Township on Rabbit Road South, so... <laughs> <laughs> and now I live on Rabbit Road North. <laughs> uh, and I went to the, um, it, the Greencastle and Antrim Township had separate schools up until the early uh, mid 1950s. So um, I actually got in on the ground floor of the consolidated uh, school district of Greencastle and Antrim Township and uh, rode the bus across the township to a small place called Shady Grove and, um, and then went into the high school, the brand new junior senior high school about two years after it opened up. And um, it, it, it it's a good place to grow up mm. and and still is do you have you seen over the years any um talk about the pros and cons maybe there's just pros of having that low those local connections i mean you know almost everyone i imagine almost everyone um i've learned more about it at as I got involved with the group because I didn't grow up in town mm -hmm. and um, it, it yeah those community connections through the chamber uh, the local banks the businesses uh, the businesses are a huge part of um, our supporting membership mm -hmm. and um, it, it's it's a unique community. Um, we next this September 27 will be the first meeting 
uh, for a triennial celebration in Greencastle called Old Home Week, Greencastle Antrim Old Home Week. It's been going on since 1902. And every three years, um, it's, it's difficult to, uh, to describe it to somebody who has not been from this area but the whole community comes together. There are 40, about 46 different committees and each committee has its own assignment and uh, it all comes together um, for that, that opening day and opening night of Old Home Week, which will now be 2022. Uh, it, it's just this well-knit community of, of people, businesses, friends, churches. And the museum is a central hub in all of that activity. Um, it, we are open um, every day, except for maybe the last day uh, during Old Home Week. And we need volunteers to cover the um, 1860 Irwin House, Museum House. And uh, we have two exhibit bays in the barn. This is the uh, South Bay, which is our rotating exhibit bay. And then the North Bay is the permanent Civil War exhibit. You know, there's a lot of talk, as you know, in, in the museum in, industry about marketing and how do we get people in the door and get people involved. And there's always this, for lack of a better word, tension of you have a, a community museum and there's this tension between how much do we over extend ourselves or overextend ourselves to try to attract um, people from the outside of the area who may or may not be interested in, in the local history. How much time yeah. and energy do you put into that because you think that you need to get numbers up versus or in addition to focusing on the community that's right there in, in front of you. Um, have you thought about that over the years? Um, it, <laughs> it, it's difficult to put into words. Uh, we The property that we bought and I gave the uh, board of directors at the, that time to go out into the community, Greencastle and Antrim Township, to look for property that would be suitable for a hometown museum. Okay. And we ended up with this property, which is right across the street from the Greencastle Antrim School District. Uh, the school district, Greencastle Antrim School District, is very, it, it's the only one I know of that has uh, kindergarten to 12th grade all on one contiguous piece of property. That's pretty rare nowadays. It is super rare. And uh, there's a there's a high school, there's a middle school, there's an elementary and a primary school. And we also have the Teamena Sacta Environmental Center. So the fact that the board chose this property that is right across Ridge Avenue from the school district has, has really been um, extremely good for communication with the with the school teachers. Mm -hmm. um, the art exhibit that you see on the back wall here uh, is from um, 2001 and 2002 by art students that were 16, 17, 18 years old at the time. And the art teacher there um, ask her junior and senior art students to put into art their feelings about uh, September 11th. She also asked them to accompany the, the paintings with um, verbiage, 
she also asked them to put their feelings and thoughts into words. Mm -hmm. And the pieces here and a few more that you can't see, uh, the students donated to the museum. Um, I have, and I just got confirmation from one of the high school art teachers that he got permission to bring his students over across the street next week to visit the museum and see this 9-11 exhibit. Mm. And um, I think that I don't know of any other school districts that have that opportunity right across the street. Uh, we've also partnered with the middle school history department in doing downtown walking tours uh, for the sixth graders. Uh, we just finished up a Franklin County Quality of Life grant um, in 2017. We the board of directors uh, signed an agreement with the. Um, Ebert Spring Archaeological Conservancy um, to take care of uh, the grounds and buildings out at Ebert Spring, which is an, an archaeological site. And uh, the Franklin County Quality of Life grant allowed us to transform one of the, the rooms into a, a 1764 one room log school. So we will be able to bring when COVID is gets better, uh, we'll be able to bring students out there and let teach them what it was like for the first frontier men and women and children to go to school in Antrim Township. And 1764, um, is a reference back to the Enoch Brown massacre. Um, it was uh, Enoch Brown was the schoolmaster and 10 of his students were killed. They were all scalped and in the 11th student was scalped but managed to get away and survived that massacre. Mm -hmm. um, it is the uh, to my knowledge, and other people have um, confirmed it, it's the first school massacre that was ever recorded in history. Benjamin Franklin in his Philadelphia newspaper um, had, had mention of it. Mm. So um, it, it's being across the street really ha from the school district has really increase the opportunities um, to interact with the students and the teachers. So you've seen the evolution from just little little meetings with a group of concerned, caring citizens to incorporation, to purchasing property, to expanding partnerships. And you've pretty much kind of seen that whole thing over the last 20 plus years yes what what is your hope for you know the coming years after we get through this dreadful if we ever get through this dreadful time and i mean is there any big capital campaign hopes or dreams or anything like that um I would like to get a capital campaign underway uh, just to support an endowment mm -hmm. that would allow the museum's board of directors to hire an executive director um, mm -hmm. that would allow more expansion of the opportunities, educational opportunities to the school district and the community. Um, then I have time time to give mm -hmm. um, as president of the board. Uh, but yes, there are it, there's always hope in the future. Yeah, I've heard stories over the years about a lot of organizations where the the initial thrust for the endowment was to create those funds available for a first executive director or first you know, whatever, um, 
And it seems like it's a lot of organizations have navigated that in a really good way. And as long as people know why they're giving the money, um, yeah, why why not? Do yes. That? Yeah. But, um, yeah, and of course, then you have to go through all of your mind of in in order to pay someone a somewhat of a living wage. How yeah. much money would you have to raise in an endowment to? let the principal pay for that person. Right. Yeah. Yep. And that's it, a lot of coordinating. It sure is. Yeah. It sure is. Yeah. I'm not sure when or how it's going to happen, but uh, I, I, I feel good about the opportunity mm -hmm. uh, to make it happen within the community here. Can you share with folks that may, might be you know, working in more of a rural uh, setting in a, in a museum or a historic site. How, how do you, what is the magic bullet <laughs> for call, to securing that, that, that business support? Are, do you have any tips or thoughts about that? Because sometimes many board members, you know, will say, well, just find that business that will support us. And it's not always that easy. It, it is not. Uh, you have to have board members that are willing to go out there and also canvas the community. Mm -hmm. And um, it's one-on-one. -on -one. And um, my philosophy from the very beginning and at uh, PA board meetings and at their annual conferences. I always describe Allison Antrim Museum as the smallest of the small museums in Pennsylvania. Hmm. Because small museums in Pennsylvania, it's like a $145,000, $150,000 annual budget and mostly higher. Mm -hmm. We have about forty-five dollars to $50,000 annual budget. Okay. And um, so it's always those one on one um, opportunities to meet people. And I, I tell my staff and the volunteers, you need to give delighted attention to whoever walks through the front doors. They are your focus until they walk out of there. Mm -hmm. You never know which person, which visitor coming in is going to really light up at the opportunities that they see and within the Irwin uh, Museum House and this reconstructed German bank, bank bar in here. Mm -hmm. Delighted attention. I have a quick funny story to share about that. I was with an organization and we had very limited parking. And so we were some, we were, we sort of hovered sometimes over the, the parking for this museum because we were trying to reserve it as much as we could for the patrons and the staff need and places to park and volunteers. And uh, this little Honda pulls up into one, into a space and I'm, getting ready to go in the building and I see that these these two guys are in the front seat and they have their hats on backwards and um not that there's anything wrong with wearing a hat backwards but I could tell that you know they were sort of like they weren't really there I didn't think to visit the museum they had hats on backwards and um ripped up jeans and I don't know a couple uh, t-shirts that or something, I don't know what that was, but something that probably the younger generation could identify with a little bit more. And um, I said, um, I saw these guys getting out of the front seat and I said, can I, can I help you with something? Cause I never want to say, hey, you can't park here. Get out of, get out of here. That, that, that wasn't my approach. But I saw they were kind of getting out of the museum and, and chatting and laughing. And I said, uh, can, I, can I help you? And they, they said, um, sort of in a, I don't know, I, not, they had a little bit of an attitude, but they said, oh, we're just going downtown to walk around. We're going to grab a bite to eat. And as I was about to 
say, well, uh, not here you're not, and you're not gonna block here. I see a hand from the back of, of, the, of the car. I see a hand grab up on the roof, it's sort of feeble. And then I look and there's someone with a, with a cane and they're, and they're pushing themselves up out of this little Honda that was probably a foot off of the <laughs> foot off the ground. And um, I sort of recognized this person and um, turns out it was a member of the museum. And uh, she starts waving, finally gets out, sort of starts waving and holding up her cane, kind of waving at me. And, and she says, oh, hello, Jason. We're, I'm going to be renewing my membership while we're here, too. Oh. <laughs> And turns out they did. They came in a little bit later after they got a bite to eat and um, renewed membership. And I think actually renewed um, at a higher level than uh -huh. they renewed before. And, but the point of that long-winded story is, had I just blasted those guys for pulling up there and not taking a breath and just sort of calmed down a minute, yeah, I could have really alienated that person who was a member of the of the museum for many years yeah um and but you're right each person you never know what they're bringing to to the organization <laughs> or how no. they're getting there <laughs> right or what they look like how they talk <laughs> right yeah that's so true yeah yeah uh, that's true i found uh, for businesses too that you might think you have a certain read on a business that, oh, they're definitely gonna give. And maybe you never hear from them again or, or the other way around. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so uh, you talked a little bit about partnerships. Do you, uh, there are other, you mentioned some other um, historical organizations and museums in the area. Can you just name a few of those that, that are in your area that you've partnered with or that you work with? Um, we've had some, depending on our exhibits, we have borrowed some things and vice versa with other uh, museums and historical organizations in the, in the county here. Mm -hmm. um, from east to west, there's uh, Renfrew Institute, Renfrew Museum, then and those are in Waynesboro and then Greencastle, uh, the Mercersburg Historical Society um, does not have a physical location, uh, but they they meet uh, their membership has activities uh, throughout the year. Then there's the Franklin County Historical Society dash Kittatinny, and that is in Chambersburg. Um, there are other smaller organizations, other, and there's Fort, or, um, yeah, Loudon, Fort Loudon Historical Society okay. uh, off of Route 30 West also. Um, and uh, going east on 30, there are some uh, organizations in Caledonia area. Actually, in Caledonia, there's the Thaddeus Stevens blacksmith shop okay. um, that uh, was run along with the, the furnaces there. And Thaddeus Stevens employed uh, formerly enslaved uh, black men and probably women. And um, there's a small community uh, south of there um, that uh, where the, the workers um, lived and everything and that there's still a small community there mm. so um but yeah we have uh, a number of historical societies and there's um middleburg state line historical society i they do not have a physical location but they get together also uh for meetings as far as i know do you um can you speak a little bit about uh, your how you got involved with PA museums? Um, when we first started up, um, the director at Renfrew 
Um, I contacted him uh, because he had been in the museum world longer, way longer than I had at the time. And I asked him what organizations does the board need to consider uh, joining up um, uh, with, with membership. And PA Museums, it was, uh, what was it before PA Museum? Pennsylvania Federation. Uh, Federation, yeah. Um, so actually, Deborah Philippi uh, was my first contact. <clears throat> and Ken and I made a, I called, I made a trip up to Harrisburg. And that's when we met Deborah Philippi. Mm -hmm. And that's how we got involved with uh, the museum, got involved with uh, PA, what is now PA Museums. Right. And you started attending the, the conferences? The conferences. And then um, King Rake, um, he actually married a Stover from this area. So he knew exactly where he, um, I'm trying to think of Mr. Gingrich's first name. So he was extremely familiar with Green Castle and Antrim Township because they would come here uh, to visit her family. And he's the uh, he was president of the Federation at that time. Okay, and okay. he's the one that asked um, if I would join the, the board of directors. OK. And that was roughly how, how long ago? Oh, 2001 or something in there, 2002. Okay. Yeah. Or did you, did you uh, rotate off for a year or something and then come back on board or? Yeah, the Federation and LPA museums have um, three, three year terms, consecutive mm -hmm. terms before um that individual if they're still there needs to take an, a year hiatus and then uh they may be invited back on on the board of directors how do you um i guess if you're willing to share you you you've served on other boards before or you do now i mean uh how do you go about balancing that i mean do you can't say yes to everything um <laughs> I need to take a three credit course at Mon Alto, Penn State to learn how to say no, I think. <laughs> uh, I, I'm getting better at it, okay. I'll put it that way. Um, <laughs> and it, it's, uh, there, there had been a Greencastle Area Arts Council in the community way before the museum. And that was probably, and the Green Castle Antrim Band Boosters uh, was a big organization and still is, I believe. Mm. Um, those were organizations on which and boards on which I served prior to um, mm. the museum board of directors. I, there's a, um, there's this uh, guy named John Orr, he, he works in Philly and he's the executive director of an organization called Art Art Reach. And actually, we interviewed him um, a little while ago. He, I think, he posts about the rule of, th of three that he sticks to. That he yeah, <laughs> join more than three boards at a time. Right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and I'm on the Franklin County um, Visitors Bureau board of directors. So okay. right now I'm just on the museum board and on the Franklin County board. So, so uh, um, where does the is the turnpike relatively near where, where you are? Um, you mean uh, Pennsylvania you mean, turnpike? Yeah, getting it on and off the turnpike. Uh, we have to drive up to Carlisle, which is about an hour hour 15 minutes wow uh, okay but we're right on i-81 um 81 okay. is like the eastern border of the borough and the antrim township line right because i guess after carlisle down it, it goes down and then it's 
takes a turn in complete opposite direction of where you are. Yeah. 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 Okay. Or drive over the West Mountain here into Fulton County and drive up through the valley there and get on the turnpike there. That's the other closest way to get to PA Turnpike. You, you said you're close to 81? Yes, very close. Okay. And 81 is a corridor that's easy, you know, on and off and go down and up. Yes. Yeah. We have the first three exits on 81 in Pennsylvania. Yeah. So uh, before we wrap up, do you have any uh, thoughts to share about um, things that you've, you know, witnessed, you know, serving um, for museums? Um, any things that, that, you know, that you've been interested in um, with PA museums? Any, any particular tips that you would have for people um, who are maybe even want to start out volunteering in museums, anything that you want to share along those lines? Um, any lessons learned over the years? <laughs> Never say no to volunteer help. Okay, can you speak that a little bit more? Yeah, um, because you never know who's going to, um, it's going to spark them. Um, Greencastle Antrim, require the school district requires 30 hours of community service or the junior seniors you do not get your diploma so being right across the street from the school district we've had a number of high school students who have done their volunteer work here uh, one of them uh, just went off to juniata college um a week ago this past uh sunday and he is going he is studying museum studies courses at juniata hmm. and um he, he when he first came there to do his volunteer work he wanted to be an archivist and um he, he so he kind of broadened his his scope for college studies mm -hmm. and and open that up a little more and his mother is now stepping into that position he had uh he had been one of our employees uh this summer okay. uh that worked in the office and now his mother is there uh we have another we have a middle school student um who is coming over two afternoons and those are the opportunities to get the students and their parents involved within their home communities. And it it's adds value to, um, in our case, Allison Antrim Museum. Yeah, and, and just knowing that um, having a way of, of putting those folks to work and and have and adding the value um i've seen it so much where uh, you know some museums are reluctant you know with whether it's interns or students or volunteers um because sometimes it takes you know a lot of work to get them up and running but I yeah think you know, can know what to plan ahead and kind of know what projects need to be done ahead of time that can help Yes, and Chippensburg University, we even have had interns from Messiah College. Mm -hmm. um, those students, even though they came from two different state colleges, uh, actually grew up in Greencastle Antrim. Um, so the, the local universities have been an excellent resource for us also. Yeah. Well, we're going to end with the lightning round. It's a lot. It's going to be. Uh oh, you didn't tell me about that. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll give you. Uh, you want the easy one first or the hard one first? <laughs> Get the hard one over with. <laughs> okay. So you you did you were involved you you wrote a book or at least one book I saw about the history of the area. Yes, it's the Arcadia Publishing Company. Um, a about all of the small towns in in the United States. So we had a tooth and I say we my husband took care of the photographs, scanning them, getting them to size. 
I took care of the background history. Uh, so we had Greencastle Antrim in 2004 and Greencastle Antrim revisited in 2007. So here's the hard question. Is there another book in the works? No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, not right now. Arcadia actually has a series called Then and Now, and they have asked us to do that. That is, it, it's a lot of work. <laughs> it's a lot of work. Maybe when I leave the museum as president of the board, we might consider it. <laughs> All right. So uh, if you had to pick one, do you think you would like kayaking or biking more? Kayaking. Okay. Is that something you do or have done or? No, uh, we've gone canoeing before. Okay. Um, and it's, it's, it's freeing. It's, you know, navigating small falls and the and the creeks and the rivers and um, yeah, That's kayaking. Awesome. Yeah. All right. And the final, this is the easy one. If you had no restrictions and there were, you know, no restrictions at all. Um, I don't want to say your final meal, but if you, if you could pick uh, any food to eat, it could be a junk food or it could be something gourmet. No restrictions at all. What what would it be? Crab. Crab, like blue yes. crab. Yes. Do you, uh, did you like it at one time? Is there a reason you don't eat it anymore? Oh, I I still eat it. So okay. something that I've eaten in the past but haven't or yeah, can't. something like that you've said I can't eat that anymore. But you get one day and you get to eat it all over again. Mm. <laughs> Cotton candy, funnel cakes, pizza. <laughs> Cotton candy. I haven't had that for a long time. Okay. <laughs> you used to get that at the Upton Festival every summer. You can get a real high off of that. Nothing but sugar. <laughs> <laughs> what was it called back in the day? It was floss. Cotton candy. Yeah. Yeah. Cotton candy. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, and it was pink or blue, I think. You're, you're Always sure. had pink. We didn't have an option of blue back, <laughs> way back. <laughs> times were tough, only pink cotton candy. Only pink. <laughs> um, well, uh, Bonnie, I really appreciate your time today. And what I'll do is um, in, on the channel, um, PA Museums have me, will have me put the, your, the website um, link in there. And of course, I'll have the name and um, make sure I spell it correctly. Yeah. <laughs> I can't pronounce it correctly. At least I can spell it properly. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for the invitation. This has been a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah. And I, uh, I hope we can uh, chat again soon. Yes. All right. Take care. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.